Pai and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. Today I'm going to be demonstrating this beautiful stormy sky with the light breaking through those grey clouds but a very ordinary sort of humble scene with this little roadway and a few trees on either side. It's often these simple scenes that can make the best paintings rather than the all singing, all dancing, spectacular photographs. So try taking a look at sort of unexpected or very simple ideas and photographs um, or places near you to paint because they can offer some really great subject matter and a great way to practice your loose landscape painting. I'm going to be painting it wet in wet, so with a large wash brush, the first thing I'll do is I'll wet the whole page except for the road. I'm going to leave that dry um, and then paint that in later using some dry brush so that it stands out from the rest. I want a really soft sky and a soft landscape um, with a really nice dark clouds. I'm starting off with raw sienna for the sky and then the dark clouds will, will be painted uh, with quite rich Payne's grey and then I'll paint in the landscape with sap green, perylene green, some Payne's grey as well and some burnt sienna. You'll notice that when the washes run too much down the page because my board's tilted at an angle of about um, 20 degrees, I'll turn my board around um, to allow the paint just to flatten out across the sky a little bit more. You can see now I'm putting in the roadway with pale grey, uh, very pale Payne's grey with a little touch of uh, raw um, burnt sienna in it um, to paint in the road wet onto the dry paper and you can see that that man-made feature looks a lot sort of harder and crisper than the rest of the painting which at the moment is very loose and very softly diffused because of the wet in wet painting method that I've used. And while the paper's still damp, I'm going to get in my tree canopies and a little bit of detail along this hedgerow here. But I'm using a much drier mix of my paint, I'm dabbing the brush out onto a paper tissue if I need to remove excess water. Um, because the paint that I apply to the damp sky wash has to be drier than the paper itself, otherwise I'll get cauliflower marks and blooms.
so that's all of the washes in for the first layer. Now while the um, foreground is still damp, I'm going to uh, just finish it off with a little bit of table salt once I've just softened that with that brush. Um, here's the ordinary table salt and just a very small sprinkle across the foreground should just break that area up a bit and give me sort of a tangle of autumn seed heads, thistles, brambles, that sort of thing suggested in the foreground. So now I need to leave the wash to dry completely and then when the salt's finished working I can brush that off with a dry brush. And here it is, nice and dry, everything's soft and softly diffused, but I've kept that nice um, dark looming um, rain cloud over on the left, but the light on the right is, is really still nice and fresh and bright, especially showing through the gaps in the canopies of the tree on the right. So now I'm going to just add some details to pull together this, this ver these very loose washes. A little bit of detail, um, crisper marks painted wet onto dry should bring the painting together. I think I'm just about done. I don't want to do too much to this scene. As I say, it's to practice sort of everyday scenes to try and um, capture the contrast between the dark clouds and the brighter areas on the right. Removing the tape helps me to see if I need to do anything else to it, to just to sort of check the balance of the painting. 
And I think I'm almost there. I'm just going to add a few more grasses and sort of dark strands of grass into the foreground. And then with the rigger brush again, I'll add a bit more dark across the mid-ground tree line and the fence. And just these few little extra darks and details will hopefully just bring the painting together a little bit more. And I think I'm going to add some birds to this painting. I think um, the lovely bright glow in the sky on the right is the perfect place for um, putting a few birds, which will then um, keep the eye of the viewer, <coughs> excuse me, um, in the focal point. Once I've just put a few little branches coming out from this tree, then I'll use the rigger brush and this same dark mixture just to carefully paint in a few little birds and they should be silhouetted really nicely against that brighter area of sky. It's really important um, to consider scale when you're painting birds. Quite often birds can be too big for the scale of the painting itself. So keep them really tiny, test your rigger brush on a piece of scrap paper to make sure you're getting a nice thin line before you paint birds. And I think that'll do. I'll zoom you in a bit. You can see how small they are and I think the scale there works quite well. We're having massive amounts of rain in the UK this autumn. Um, sadly, some poor folk have had to put up with terrible flooding. Luckily, we're OK where we are, uh, but the clouds have been quite spectacular and that's what's inspired me to paint this because the clouds against the remaining green on the trees and the beautiful golds and browns that are coming through from autumn always look so spectacular and that's what I wanted to capture here in this ordinary everyday scene. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll sort of look around your own area for some um, similar sort of humble seeming scenes that can turn into really nice paintings and really good opportunities to practice your loose watercolour landscape painting. Thank you for watching. Uh, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you're interested in more in-depth tutorials, then you can follow us on our Patreon pages. The links are in the description below. Many thanks, take care and happy painting. Bye.